Good morning, GSCC. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. If you can please stand on your feet and help us praise the Lord this morning. Lord, we give you thanks for allowing us to be here, Lord. We give you all honor, all worship, and all praise. Amen. Come on, church. Down every 
today, God. You reign undefeated in victory, God. God, as your children, God, we receive that victory today. Jesus, empower your people, God, by your spirit today, right now. Take this broken 
church, let's lift our voices, declare this together. Come on, let's believe it. When I lift my voice and shout,
that stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored so much for joining us for worship this morning at GACC. If you're here in person, you can go ahead and find your seat. If you're connecting online, thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Wow. Can, 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 we, can we thank God one more time for this beautiful, amazing time of worship? Wow. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for being here, whether you're in person or online, thank you all so much. I'm George, and I'm one of the pastors here, and we, yes, we want to continue to praise and worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and at this time, we're going to be giving our tithes and offerings. And while you're getting that together, I, uh, we want to remind you 
of something. But before I do that, I want to congratulate every teacher, every school staff, student, admin. If you're part of a school somehow, you survived week one of school. So give yourself a round of, yeah. I said the parents too. Yeah, the parents. Amen. Thank you, God, for that. And speaking of school, uh, today is the last Sunday of our back-to-school drive, so thank you for those who have given. If you're, if you're planning on giving, if it's in your car or something, bring it in. Put it in the lobby. There's a big old box there where you can put that. And thank you all for making a difference in our community for that. And we've been going through this amazing series called Better Together. And, and But I... But I don't know about you, but sometimes when you look on, on the news or even go to work and see it or, or on Facebook or whatever, it seems like a lot of people aren't together a lot of times. So there's a lot of differences that could break up that togetherness really, really easy. So in, in the spirit of, uh, because I, I think we have a lot more in common than we think or that we see. So in the spirit of the first week of school, I, I'd like to do a classroom activity with y'all here, okay? And, and those online too, y'all can play along. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna ask you a question and just simply shout out your answer, okay? We're, we're gonna start with an easy one. First service had a problem with it, I don't know why, but I, but, but, but I think we're awake now, so we're good. What is your first name? Much better than nine o'clock. I don't know what happened to them up there. What is your favorite color? What is your favorite food to eat? Okay. What was that? I didn't hear that one. What school did you go to or are you going to? Never heard of that. Are the Cowboys going to win the Super Bowl this year? And the correct answer is no. I'm sorry. I'm going to get a lot of, somebody told me, well, you got cowboy colors on your shoes. I'm like, hey, these were on sale, okay, man, so sorry. <laughs> Last question. Who is our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, the name above all names, the reason why we come and praise his name is? Jesus. So you see, I, Regardless of all the differences, guys, we are truly better together when we gather in the name of Jesus, when we give in the name of Jesus, when we invite in the name of Jesus, when we serve in the name of Jesus, and when we pray for one another in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that regardless of all the differences that we have in our lives, Lord, we can come together, Lord. We can gather. We can connect with one another, Lord, and praise you in everything that we do, Lord, in our giving, in our inviting, and in our praying for one another, in our serving, Lord. Thank you for gathering us, Lord. Thank you for you. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. May you take these tithes and offerings, Lord, and multiply it, Lord, to reach one more, Lord. One more for you, one more marriage, one more child, one more family, Lord. One more, Lord, because together we are truly better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, GSEC. We are so excited that you're able to join us for our Sunday service. We want to welcome all of our guests this morning. If this is your first time joining us, let us know by scanning the QR code located behind every seat. If you're joining us online, please text CONNECT to 956-395-1551. You'll be redirected to fill out our online Connect card. We would love to get to know you and stay connected with you. Help us impact the lives of students and families at Benavides Elementary with our Operation Blessing Back to School Drive. Today is the last day to bring in school supplies to place in the collection box in the lobby. You can also make a monetary donation in any amount to help GSCC purchase school supplies by giving to Operation Blessing online at gsccconnect.com or by dropping your donation marked Operation Blessing in one of the offering containers located at the sanctuary exits. We are blessed to be a blessing. GSCC Connect Groups presents Coffee and Connect. Join us this Wednesday, August 21st at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. 
Grab a cup of coffee, meet the Connect Group leaders, and learn about all of the groups. Get your questions answered and sign up for a Connect Group. The start of the Connect Group semester is Wednesday, August 28th. Make sure that you register for a group. The Next Gen Ministry has you covered every Wednesday night this Connect Group semester. While you attend your Connect Group, children birth through fifth grade can join us for Kids Connect starting this Wednesday, and students in sixth through 12th grades can join us for youth service. Kids Connect and Youth meets here at GSEC every Wednesday night from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Doors open at 6 for check-in. Get the whole family connected this semester. Ladies, save the date and get your ticket for Hope Night happening Friday, September 13th at 6.30 p.m. This is a fun girls' night out for all ages. We'll come together here in the sanctuary for a time of worship followed by a word from Pastor Liliano Gonzalez. Tickets are $25 to attend, which includes a t-shirt and a meal. Don't wait, get your tickets in the lobby today on the GSCC Connect app or at gsccconnect.com slash events. We'll see you there. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here at GSCC. Well, good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Community Church. Those of you who are here in person and those of you who are watching online with us today, what a blessing it is to be here, to be in the presence of God, to have the chance to worship together, to receive a word together. I am so glad that you decided to be here and be a part of what God is doing here today. So welcome, and again, God bless you. I'm so excited as we continue the series that we've been in better together. We've been talking about the last few weeks and we're going to continue to talk about for the next couple of weeks how God designed us not to do life alone, but to do life together. We are better together because we were created for community. We were created for relationships. That's why Connect Groups is such a big part of, of what we do, how we do ministry here at Good Shepherd Community Church. If you don't know, Connect Groups are small groups that meet all throughout the year. They meet in, in all over the county that where we have people meeting in homes. We have people meeting in businesses. We have people, some that meet here at the church. And we have groups for everyone. Everybody, I want you to know there's a group for you. There's groups about parenting. There's groups about marriage and, and families. There's groups about uh, financial stewardship. There's groups about how to read and study the Bible, how to pray. There's so many groups for each of us to connect in and to connect with one another. It's so important. We don't just do things because we feel like everybody here has a ton of extra time to do just a, so, a whole lot of other things. And let's just add one more thing to our calendar, right? No. We, we do things because they're important. Connect groups are important. They help us to connect with God, to connect with each other, to connect with those separated from God, to learn, to be discipled, to grow. That's why we want to encourage you over these next few weeks to sign up. I want to uh, ask the, the media team to put up the, the QR code that we've had last week. And again, want to give you an opportunity. Maybe you did this last week. Uh, maybe you haven't done it yet. But if you haven't, you can scan this QR code, and this will take you to, to a list of all of the Connect groups that are available. I want to invite you, encourage you, read through this list, pray and ask the Lord how, how he would di direct you and lead you to get connected this semester. Amen? Amen. You can scan that QR, QR code. By the way, Coffee and Connect is this week. I want to encourage you, come and participate in that. Come and, come and see you. That gives you a chance to meet the Connect Group leaders. That gives you a chance to, to see what the Connect Groups are about, to ask some questions, to get to know some people. And by the way, they get so competitive with their tables and setting things up. There's going to be free coffee while supplies last. Some of y'all drink a lot of coffee. But while supplies last, there will be free coffee here. Again, they get so, they're, they're bringing just all sorts of food. Come hungry. It's going to be a great time. I want to invite you as you pray about asking the Lord which group to connect yourself to. Come and help, come and be a part of that group. And I believe it'll be a help to you as you make that decision, that determination, which group uh, to sign up for this semester. Again, we want to encourage Connection. We want to encourage community. Why? Because we truly are better together. Amen? Amen? As we began this series a couple of weeks ago, we looked in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where we see the Word of God was comparing the church to a, a physical body, right? That's why we call it the body of Christ. 
And, and just like a physical body has many different members, many different parts, and they play different roles and different functions, that's how God designed his church to function as well. So we talked about the benefits of community, the benefits of connecting with one another. One of those benefits that we talked about last week is wisdom that we can gain from others through community. And today, as we continue to talk about what some of the benefits of being a part of a connect group, what are the benefits of connecting together, doing life together, I, I wanna spend some time today talking about accountability. And nobody said amen. <laughs> accountability is one of those things that we all need, but we don't really like it, right? We all need accountability though. As much as we don't want to admit it because of our human nature, we need it. We need others in our lives to hold us accountable. I remember being a kid and my mom would ask us to clean our rooms. First of all, she had to ask us. I wasn't just gonna do it. She had to ask, hey, I need you to clean your room. And then I did probably what, what a lot of other kids, you know, my age would have done. You know, we, we're gonna find every, every space under the bed every hidden corner of a closet, every shelf, every, and what everything just gets crammed where mom can't see it. Yeah. At least where I think she can't see it. I wasn't really cleaning, I was just relocating the mess. And she, she would come in and she would say, hey, did you clean your room? Yes, ma'am, I cleaned it. I sure did. Is it mom clean? Oh, no. That means she's gonna come in, she's gonna look under the bed, she's gonna look in the closet, she's gonna look on all this, she's gonna make sure that I actually did what I said I did. She knew there needed to be accountability. She knew that I needed to be held accountable, that there was a, a standard, she was going to inspect what she expected. So I knew that that was necessary. Right now, I'm having some of those same conversations as a parent with my kids now. Last night we were getting ready to watch a movie, but I told the kids, before we watch a movie, I need you to help me clean the living room. Yeah, but dad, it's already clean. And I look, and I mean, there's uh, just, poof, the weekends, how many of you parents, you know what I'm talking about? It's already clean, dad. I was like, are you kidding me? Let's clean it up. And, and so I start making a list of, do you know, I need you to, okay, pick up the, the toys off of the floor and let's make sure that there, the, there's food put away. And let's, Oh, Dad, your standards are so high. They're really not. <laughs> there just needs to be a little bit of accountability, right? But we, we all hopefully grow past that. My mom doesn't have to come to my house anymore and tell me to clean my room. You know, she doesn't send me a text message and say, Hey, honey, before you go to bed, please brush your teeth. Wash behind your ears. Right, we grow, we grow beyond those things, but, but the need for accountability still remains. See, as a kid, I needed accountability, and as an adult, I didn't grow out of my need for accountability. It's just that the things that I need to be held accountable for change. It's different, but I still need accountability. That's one of the, the benefits of connect groups is that we're able to be accountable to one another. We may not need our moms to tell us to clean our rooms or brush our teeth or eat our vegetables and all those things, but there are other things that we can hold one another accountable for as we walk together towards God's best for our lives. See, I want God's best for my life. I also want God's best for your lives. And we, as the church, as the body of Christ, should want God's best for each other's lives. We should want to see each other thrive and succeed and excel and grow. That's why we need accountability as we move together towards God's best for our lives. I want us to look this morning in God's word at, at what scripture has to say about accountability through community. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, by the way, you can turn to Hebrews chapter 10. We're gonna begin in verse 19, but before we get there and we read together, can we just take a moment to pray? Lord, thank you so much for this day. 
Thank you, Lord, for Good Shepherd Community Church. Thank you for Brownsville, oh God. Thank you for Cameron County. Thank you, oh God, for the place that you have planted us in, oh God, and called us to, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for your word. Lord, I pray that as we read your word, we would receive your word, respond to your word, oh God, that your word would stir our hearts, oh God, and, and, and impact us, oh God, in a way, oh God, that draws us closer and closer to you, oh God. I pray that as we, we read your word, we would hear it, oh God, with our ears, but Lord, we would receive it, oh God, with, with our hearts, with our minds, oh God, and that we, oh God, would walk in, in obedience according to your word, oh God. I pray that you would speak loudly and clearly, oh God, as we read, oh God, would you do, oh God, a work in us, with us, and through us by the power of your word, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, it says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places, by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he has opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. There's some key things that I want us to look at in this passage of Scripture this morning, but there's so much here. There's so much good word here. I don't want to just read around it. I want us to fully grasp what this passage is saying this morning. The writer here in Hebrews was, was writing this to, to, to encourage the New Testament church after Jesus died on the cross, after he was buried and he, he resurrected and he paid the price for our sins, he was encouraging them because of who Jesus was and what Jesus had done, that things were different now. It was, a, it was a new way. There was a new door that Jesus had opened for salvation, for freedom, for hope, for life. And so he was encouraging them. He says, now that we have this newfound confidence to enter into the holy places because of what Jesus has done on the cross, let's go for it. He was saying, wow, church, what an exciting time to be alive. What an exciting time to be a believer. He said, I know we used to have sacrifices, and I know that there, things used to be this way, but Jesus, because of what he has done, has made a way where there seemed to be no way. And now we have access to God in a way that we didn't previously have access to God. Let's take advantage of it. Let's not take it for granted, and let's be all in for God. He was encouraging the church his letter of encouragement, though, was also a letter of accountability. He was going to hold them accountable to some things, and he was asking them also to hold one another accountable. I want us to continue to look deeper in this passage to see some of the areas of accountability that I believe he addresses here. And in Hebrews 10, going back to verse 23, it says, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who is promised is faithful. He says, never let go of your faith in Christ. He was encouraging them to hold on tightly to the promises of God. Because God is faithful to his promises. How many of you have ever made a promise and you hope somebody forgot? You know, you, you promised that you would do something and then the day comes and you're like, oh man, I really don't want to do this. God's not like that. Have you ever made a promise and, and just not intended to fulfill it at all? God's not like that. God is true to his promise, is true to his word. So he says, hold on to your faith because a God of promise has got you. His promises for you are true. He is faithful. He is able to accomplish everything that he says he'll do. And here's the thing, it says, do this without wavering. Well, he, why would he encourage them to do this without wavering? Because there was going to be temptation to waver. There was going to be temptation to want to let go. There was going to be things that would discourage and try to, to get, the enemy will do whatever he can to try to get you to let go of your faith. 
So he says, hold on without wavering. And I love this. It's not, this is not just an encouragement to an individual. He says, let us hold fast. He's saying, come on, church. Together we can. Together we can hold on to our faith. Together we can stand strong. He was saying, come on, let's go. Together. Ecclesiastes 4 Verses nine and 10 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and he's not another to lift him up. Have you ever been all by yourself and fallen? I know I have, probably more times than I would like to admit. <laughs> And as I was preparing this message, I thought about a time when I had gone out to my truck to get something. It had just rained, the rain had let up. I was like, I'm gonna go out to my truck, I'm gonna grab a few things, I'm gonna come back in the house before it starts to rain again. So I did that, I, I go to my truck, I, I grab a few things, I have you know, bags and, and all this stuff in my hands, and I'm walking back to my house, and again, it was wet, it had just rained, the front entryway of my house, of the, the, before you hit the front door, is tile. And I hit that tile going just a little bit too fast. And I'm telling you, my feet came out from under me like a cartoon character. Just both at the same time, just whew, bags flying everywhere. I hit the ground and boom, knocked the wind out of myself. So... I laid there for just a minute to catch my breath, to think about what just happened. And then the next thing I did was this. I got up and I looked around to make sure none of my neighbors were outside and saw me. <laughs> Man, I hope my neighbors are not outside. I know my neighbors got cameras and they're pointing and they, I'm, I'm sure they're gonna go back and watch this and laugh at me and man, I hope nobody saw me. I was embarrassed. But a lot of times that's how we handle things when we struggle in our faith. We don't want people to see that we're struggling. We don't want us, people to see that we're hurting. We don't want people to see that there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm, I'm barely holding on and we don't want people to see. And so we, we hide or we try to isolate ourselves. But instead of looking to see if anybody's watching to just make sure nobody saw, we ought to have a heart, a mindset, an attitude that says, I, I, I need somebody to know what's going on in my life because I need help. You know, I, I really should have looked around and saw if there was a neighbor that could have helped me get up and help me in the house and, and not, let, not let pride, not let my ego, not let whatever it was keep me from, but to say, is there anybody here who can help me? Things in life are gonna happen. They're gonna knock us down. There are gonna be struggles there are gonna be challenges. There are gonna be things that the enemy tries to use to discourage us, to get us to let go, to get us to quit, to get us to give up on our faith. He'll do whatever he can do to try to get us to waver. But connect groups are a great place to surround ourselves with people who can help us to get back up and keep going. People who can hold us accountable in our faith. We can rally around one another. We can encourage each other. We can hold fast to our faith and not give up when things get tough. We do not have to go through life alone. We're better together. Again, the enemy wants to distract us so that he can deceive us, so that he can dislocate us, isolate us, and then destroy us. We don't have to go through struggles alone. I don't have to fall all by myself. But we can, we can surround ourselves with people who are there to help pick us up, encourage us, dust us off and say, come on, let's keep going. Let's keep moving forward. It's God's intended design that we have people around us who can help us when we get knocked down so that we don't stay down. Hebrews chapter 10 goes on to tell us a few other ways that we can hold one another accountable. In verse 24, it says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love 
and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So we ought to be thinking of ways, how can we encourage one another, stir one another up, motivate one another to, do, to love well and to do good works, to do the things that believers should be doing. Faith, by the way, is not passive, it's active. Faith is action, it is actively following Jesus. That means that if we truly have faith in him, if we truly love and have faith in Jesus, we should be stirred up with a desire to do the things that the Bible says followers of Jesus Christ should be doing. One of those things, verse 25 says, is meeting together, gathering, just like we're doing today. I love Sunday mornings. I was sitting over here in worship today and, and just so thankful for what God has given us the opportunity to do. To be, to be here together with one another, worshiping and receiving a word. We should meet together. Some of the other things that we should be doing as, as believers is gathering together, reading, spending time in God's word, spending time in prayer, living generous lives, serving one another, serving our community. Those are things that we ought to be doing as believers, as followers of Christ. Now, here's the thing I want to be very careful. We don't do those things, and I don't do those things to earn my salvation. I'm saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. I can't do anything to earn salvation from him. The things that we do as believers, we do because, not to get saved, but because we have been saved. I'm so thankful for my salvation. I want to be closer and closer with God. I want to take steps closer to him every single day of my life. And so we do these things to grow. We do these things to learn. We do these things to mature spiritually, but we don't do them because we have to. We do them because we love the Lord and we have a desire to get closer and closer and closer to him. And as much as I want to do those things, as much as I want to do the right things, how many of you know sometimes we need a little bit of help? We need a little reminder every now and then. Sometimes we know the right things to do, but sometimes it's tough. That's why we need accountability. Don't you hate it when you share with somebody, you're, you're, you're confiding in them, and you, 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 you let it slip that you're trying to eat healthy? You let it slip that you're trying to eat healthy, you're, you're trying to, to, to limit your sugar intake, and you, you're, you, you want to just, you want to just, this is the new me, I'm changing my life. And then they call you on it, right? They walk past you, and they, they catch you with a carton of ice cream, and you're using a, a frozen Snickers bar as a spoon to eat it. <laughs> Some of you are going to go home and try that. <laughs> let me know how it goes. And they're like, hey, I thought you were trying to eat healthy. I thought you were trying to limit your, your sugar intake. And you're like, man, I thought you were trying to mind your business. <laughs> we don't like it when people hold us accountable, but we need it. It's, it's, it helps us to have people who will encourage us to do the right things. I love the word stir from this passage of scripture. The, the original Greek word here that we translate to stir in Hebrews chapter 10 is paroxysmos. It means incitement to do good. You gotta surround yourself with people who will incite you to do good. There are a lot of people probably that we've known throughout our lives that will incite us to do a lot of things, but we wanna surround ourselves with people who will incite us to do good. Good. Another definition is this, to sharpen alongside or to exasperate. When I read that, I just kind of laughed a little bit. That word exasperate, you know what that means? It means they're wearing you out. Has somebody ever been so encouraging to you and it just, it just wore you out? They're just, you can do it, you got it, let's go. And you're like, oh, just, can we stop being so positive? Let me complain just a little bit. <laughs> but it says to sharpen alongside of, to exasperate. In the tense of this word, how it was used, it indicates something that's happening right now and it indicates something that's happening 
continuously. That's what that word stir means there. It means as believers, we should be actively working alongside one another to consistently sharpen each other. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron and as one man sharpens another. Connect groups are a great place for us to connect with others, to build community where we can find support, accountability, encouragement to do the things that we know will help us to grow and be spiritually healthy. We're better together. We should be looking for opportunities to surround ourselves with people who will stir us up and sharpen our faith. Amen? Not only does accountability help us to do the right things, accountability also helps us to avoid the things that we shouldn't be doing. Hebrews 10, moving on in verse 26 to 31, says, For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Verse 31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So this passage we've been reading in Hebrews has been very, very encouraging to the church. It's it's been very much, hey, we ought to gather together. We want to stir one another up to love and good works. We want to encourage you to hold on to your faith, not to not quit, to, to give in, to press on. And then he begins to talk about sin. And he talks about the attitude towards sin. By the way, sin is very real. Sin carries very real consequences. This passage and many other places in Scripture are very clear on that. God is a holy, righteous, and a just God. Yes, He is love. Yes, He is peace. Yes, He is kindness. Yes, He is joy. But He is a just, He is a righteous God. We cannot continue sinning and expect for there to be no repercussions. Verse 31 again says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. As I think about this passage of scripture, I think about something that I've heard many times before. I've heard people say this, that only God can judge me. Right, only God. And when I think about that, I think about, man, sometimes we we, we say that like we don't really believe it's ever gonna happen. We say that as if we don't anticipate that one day we will stand before the living God, the creator of all things, and we will be held accountable for the things that we've done. And so a lot of times when people say, only God can judge me, what they're saying is, I don't want to be held accountable by any other person. I'm accountable to God and to God only. And they use it as a way of of, of avoiding Avoiding that accountability, avoiding those conversations. But, but here's the thing. I would much rather have a conversation w- w- with a brother or a sister in Christ. I would much rather Jacqueline uh, come and say something to me and say, hey, you know I love you. You know I'm for you. But I, I see this in your life, and, 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 and this is sin. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to move beyond this. I want to encourage you to grow. I want to encourage you to repent, to seek the Lord, and to move away from this thing because one day you're going to be held accountable to God. This is what James 5.16 says. says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Galatians 6 verses 1 through 5 says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him 
in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and the reason, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own love. So a lot of times when we say, well, only God can judge me. I don't want to be accountable to, to, to anybody else. But here's the thing. Biblically, we ought to be sharing with one another the things that are going on in our life, praying for one another, finding those people who, who love us enough to tell us the truth, like we talked about last week, to say, hey, I see this and I love you enough to, to let you continue walking in this sin without saying something. They're not judging. We're not gathering together and, and, and you know, comparing like, oh, did you see what this person did? Man, I'm bad, but they're real bad. Man, I, I've done some things, but, I, but I'll never do that. Or man, can you believe this? It's, it's about loving your brother, your sister in Christ enough to say, hey, I, I see this, man, but I just have to tell you, you know, this is sin. This breaks God's heart. This is not God's best for your life. God's got a better plan for your life. I want to encourage. Can I pray with you? And we pray with one another. It says that through that prayer, we can be healed. We can be set free. That God can deliver us. We don't have to be stuck in sin. But a lot of times, again, if we're hiding, if we're hiding sin, if we're hiding those things, when things come to light, then God is able to deal with them. And so we find people that we, we love. We find people that we trust that will speak the truth. By the way, again, same thing as last week. We don't tell everybody all of our business, right? You know, don't introduce yourself to, to every, when you come up to somebody at church or you come up to somebody in your, in your connect group, don't introduce yourself by saying your first name and all your sins. Hi, my name is Rick and, and I, I really, pl pl please don't do that. Right? But we ask God to connect us with people who we know love us, who are for us, who want to see God's best for our lives. And we have honest, vulnerable conversations where, where we, we, we share one another's struggles and we pray for one another and we ask for God's help together. And there's accountability there. Good Shepherd Community Church is a place to feel welcome, valued, and cared for. Amen. You, you probably have heard us say that several times. Well, part of caring for one another is loving one, one another enough to, to, to have those sometimes conversations that can feel difficult. But to say, man, I really think God has better for your life than, than, than this sin, than this thing. Can we pray together? Can I help you? Can we, can we restore in gentleness, with love? The church and connect groups are a place where those who are struggling with sin can come and connect with others who have a desire to see them walk in freedom over sin. It's not a place to pass judgment, a place to gossip or to compete, to see who's better, who's worse, whatever, all those things. It's a place where we come together. We can confess our sins to one another. Our struggles, we can pray together, we can receive restoration, freedom, and healing. And by the way, we all need this in our lives. We all need this kind of accountability in our lives. Accountability is such a big part of what makes us better together. I want to invite the worship team to come forward this morning. We were created for connection and community. And one of the greatest benefits of the community is accountability. We don't have to do life all by ourselves. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that we don't have to do life alone. Through connect groups, we can surround ourselves with people who want to see God's best in our lives and through our lives. Through connect groups, we can find people who will hold us accountable to our faith, people who won't quit on us and won't let us quit on ourselves, people who won't let us quit on our faith, but they will hold us accountable, they will encourage us, they will lift us up when we fall. When we feel like life is knocking us down, we need to surround ourselves with people who will help us get back up, dust us off, and say, come on, let's walk through life together. 
Let's pray. Let's, let's continue to, to pursue God's best for our lives together. Connect groups are a great environment for these things to take place. But we don't have to wait for the Connect Group semester to begin to ask the Lord to help us in these areas today. We can right here, right now, right where we're at, bring these things before the Lord and ask for his help. And I believe the presence of God is here right now and will help us. So I want to invite us to just bow our heads and close our eyes. Maybe you're here today and you feel like you've really been struggling in your faith. Maybe you're watching online and you feel this. My prayer is that today you would feel God through the Holy Spirit reaching out and inviting you to hold fast to your faith. Hold fast to the hope that you have and be reminded of the promises of God. You may be, as life happens, you may feel like you've gotten beat up, knocked down, and you say, I'm so tired. I'm holding on, but just barely. I've been tempted to just let go. But I feel God inviting me to just hold on, and I feel God holding on to me right now. If that's you, you say, I've really struggled. I've been struggling to hold on to my faith. I've been tempted to let go, but I want to be strengthened. I want to be encouraged to keep holding on. If that's you, would you just raise your hand, every head bowed, every eye closed? If you're online, you can reach out and let us know. Also. Lord, you see, you see the hands, you see the hearts, you know the challenges, you know the struggles, oh God. You know the things that they're walking through, oh God. I pray that you, oh God, would strengthen, would encourage, oh God. And I pray that right now, right where they're at, oh God, whether they're here, oh God, in person, whether they're at home, whether they're in their car, wherever they may be watching this, oh God, Lord, that you would just, Lord, as they're holding on to you, oh God, I pray that you, oh God, would wrap your arms around them. They would feel your presence, oh God, that they would, they would feel your comfort. They would feel your peace. They would feel strength and they would feel encouraged, oh God. And I pray that we as a church, oh God, would continue to encourage one another to hold on, oh God. I pray that they would find somebody, oh God, to, to share, oh God, what they're walking through, somebody that they love, that, that trusts them, that wants to see your best in their life, oh God, that they would find that person, oh God, connect with them, oh God, and move forward together, holding on, oh God. I pray for strength strength in Jesus name oh God to keep going to keep moving to keep pressing in to not let the enemy win to not let the enemy talk them out of oh God or get them to let go of their faith oh God but that you oh God would continue to encourage them strengthen them oh God by your word oh God that they would just receive oh God your strength and your courage to keep going in Jesus name maybe you're here in You've wanted to grow in your faith and you've known a lot of the right things to do. You've known the things that you've wanted to do, but for some reason or another, you haven't done them. Maybe you've said tomorrow so many times, but it always feels like you're stuck in yesterday. I want to pray for you today. Lord, for those that, are, that, that know, oh God, what you're calling them to do, Lord. But for one reason or another, oh God, have not stepped into it yet oh god i pray that you lord god would encourage them lord i pray that they would they would prioritize oh god their spiritual growth oh god i pray that they would prioritize oh god stepping one step closer each and every single day to you oh god i pray that you would remind them oh god that you would stir their hearts oh god to love and good works, oh God. And I pray that, that the church, oh God, we would stir one another up, oh God. We would encourage one another to read, oh God, your word, to pray, to spend time, Lord, being generous and serving the church and the community, oh God, that you, oh God, would help us to help one another, oh God, as you build the community here at Good Shepherd Community Church. I also wanna pray for those of you here who maybe you feel like you're stuck in sin. You may feel like that in a general way, or you may feel like that very, very specific, man, I really, really struggle. There's a sin in my life that I'm over, I'm struggled to overcome, and I, I, I want to receive freedom from this sin. I want to walk in freedom and, and peace, and I, I don't want to be bound up by this thing anymore. I, I want to be set free. I want to be healed from this thing. If that's you today, you say, there's a sin that I'm really struggling with, and I, and I want, I want to ask God to forgive me, and then I want to be freed from, from, from this thing. Would you just raise your hand? Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Again, Lord, you see the hands, you see the hearts, you see those, oh God, online. Lord, you know what they're walking through. You know what the struggle is. You know what's, what's going on in their lives. Oh God, I pray, Father, that you would just bring healing and freedom in Jesus' name. Oh God, would you, Lord, forgive, oh God, as we repent. And Lord, would you do what only you could do, oh God. I pray that as, as, as they find connection, oh God, with, with other people, oh God, as we walk in accountability, oh God, that you, oh God, would bring freedom and healing and strength and life in Jesus' name, that the enemy would no longer keep people bound up in sin, oh God, and bondage, oh God, but Lord, that you would be uh, free in Jesus' name. So would you do a work in us, Oh God, right there where we just said, Lord, I, I, I need you. Lord, we, we need you, oh God. And we need each other, Lord. Would you, oh God, show us the groups to get connected to, oh God. Would you lead us, oh God, to the people that you want us to connect with this semester, oh God. And Lord, would you use me, oh God, to, to, to help, oh God, to be accountable to somebody else, oh God, and when would you, oh God, help me, oh God, to find the person to be accountable to, oh God, would you, oh God, help us, oh God, to walk together in unity, oh God, to continue to move closer and closer to your plans and your purposes for our lives, oh God, I thank you for what you've done, oh God, and I thank you for what you're going to continue to do, oh God, I pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us and be with us in all things and through all things, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, can we just celebrate this morning? And then I just want us to end by standing together and just spending just a moment in worship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's end today's service by just bringing praise and glory and honor to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen, let's sing this out. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of For what you've done today, oh God. We ask that you would be with us as we go, oh God. Surround us with your presence, oh God. Be glorified and honored through our lives, oh God. We love you, we worship you, and we thank you for this day, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Yeah, let's thank the Lord.